Hello, I'm Atu Jameer and you're watching Hornwheel TV Spy Med 9, now news in details. Construction of the new complex of the High Court in Nagaland has been in the news for taking on an exceptionally long time to complete. Today, Hornwheel TV visited the site of the High Court complex at Merima near Kohima to get more details about the construction activities there. Let's have a look at the ground report. Unlike other northeastern states like Manipur, Meghalaya, Tripura, uh, which started simultaneously with Nagaland. But Nagaland High Court construction building is still incomplete. The, the present uh, High Court complex under construction, uh, there are so many infrastructures within the complex. So right now, uh, on a war footing, we are taking up uh, the remaining uh, construction of the main court complex as well as the residential uh, buildings of judges. So by November, um, we are expecting to complete at least the main court complex so that it is available for uh, functioning. Mm. Uh, started simultaneously with Nagaland. Mm. And those three steps is already completed. They have before. completed, yeah. yes. So uh, why is like Nagaland always lagging behind when it comes to construction? Mm. Either because of funds or it's because of other mm. reasons? Mm. Uh, like I mentioned, the other states they got funding from the center as a central centrally sponsored scheme. Whereas uh, for Nagaland, because of the shift uh, from uh, the the what do you call uh, finance commission to NITIU, and we were supposed to get funding from the uh, centrally sponsored scheme, uh, the special assistance scheme. That did not happen. So that's why there's a delay as compared to the other states. In cases of uh, in judiciary in Nagaland, mm. so do you think having a separate court will be helpful for Nagaland? Mm. Funding, I think probably it is because uh, the maker farm flow from the center. Like other states, uh, as I mentioned, uh, they got funding from capital investment. And in case of Nagaland, it had to be funded from the state uh, fund. And so that is why the fund flow was a little less time was the, uh, being, uh, I mean, extra time was being taken. Then uh, COVID-19 also came two years. So that also stalled to works a little bit. And again, uh, certain areas, CPI inquiry was there that also hampered the development. But uh, work is on and we should expect uh, completion of the main complex by November. Within the High Court building, Kohima, mm. there are so many infrastructure breakup. So right now, we are concerned with the main court complex and the residential complexes of the churches, starting from uh, Chief Justice. So I think uh, for this, the funds should be available and uh, we should be able to complete uh, the main building by November and rest of the building by early next year or so. Because uh, structurally, uh, nearly 70% of the works are completed. Now, remaining part is the finishing. You see, it has to be amended in the parliament, the Act, which is known as Northeastern Areas Reorganization Act, and without which uh, we cannot be given separate status. But uh, nevertheless, infrastructure is ready. The old court, uh, 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 Nagaland Bench Court, has been completed with the construction of further two courtrooms. So I think now, if the parliament places the bill uh, for consideration, uh, then I can, we can be entitled to a separate court. And we are waiting for that. I was hoping it will be placed uh, during this monsoon season. Uh, but this time only family court was taken up. So maybe in the next uh, parliament session, uh, we are hopeful. And our chief minister is in contact with the union law minister. So I think hopefully uh, sooner than later we will have. And Hornbill TV also talked with advocates at the Guwahati High Court Kohima bench to get their views re regarding having a separate high court for Nagaland. Let's have a look. 
Decepticon and I'm an advocate. You are but you and uh, this is called to take, talk about uh, High Court, completion of High Court in Nagaland. So after, if the High Court has been completed, I believe there will be more opportunity for new appointed judges and also more opportunity for those low students who have graduated and also uh, those pending cases lying there in High Court or District Court, it will be a, a fully recovery. My name is Brunima Paul. I am practicing in District Court, Kohima. Uh, the completion of the High Court is very much necessary for the people of Nagaland because it is high time for us to access on any law that uh, come up to us and it will benefit the people because uh, in a larger way because we, we will be able to get access to uh, the location which will be suitable for the public as well as law seeker people because we cannot uh, always uh, keep on pending on our cases and approach the higher court in other states and uh, not only that it will benefit for uh, it will be a benefit for young lawyers who are uh, graduated and it will help them to uh, get employment and uh, get more experience and give an interest to the subject matter and think, take things forward uh, so that the High Court uh, can uh, initiate necessary proceedings in our own state uh, to help people to access to uh, litigating factors and of course uh, we are looking up to it. The National Socialist Council of Nagalim, Isaac Mweva and SCNIMS said it will continue with the ceasefire agreement signed with the centre 25 years ago even as talks for a permanent peace accord are on. The NSCNIMS came out with a booklet on completion of 25 years of the ceasefire agreement. A political dialogue with mutual understanding is key for an amicable outcome in the larger interest of all, it said. The ceasefire monitoring cell of the NSCN said it would ensure that the group maintains the agreed ceasefire ground rules and letter and in spirit to support a political dialogue for a logical conclusion. The government had also signed a framework agreement with the major Naga group and a CNIM on August 3, 2015, in presence of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The framework agreement came after over 80 rounds of negotiations, with the first breakthrough made in 1997 when the ceasefire pact was sealed after decades of insurgency in Nagaland, which started soon after India's independence in 1947. However, the final solution is yet to see the light of the day with NSCNIM remaining firm on its demand for a separate flag and constitution of the Naga people. Besides the framework agreement with the NSCNIM, the centre also inked an agreed position with Naga national political groups and NPGs comprising of seven organisations in December 2017. The Western Sumi Hoho has asked the government of Nagaland to intervene to ensure lifting of a blockage within 24 hours imposed by the Nagaland Ziliang People Organization on Kievi village. The Western Sumi Hoho issued a press release on Friday warning that if the government fails to act on the blockage, the Hoho will enforce an indefinite ban on entire Tansiri Par subdivision and take remedial steps to rescue Kievi village from the unjustified blockage. The Hoho also announced its withdrawal from the coordinating committee formed between the Ziliang Rong body of Nagaland and the WSH. Further, all Sumi people residing in Perrin district are asked to leave the district within 48 hours until further notice. It may be mentioned that the Nagaland Ziliang People Organization has blocked, blocked vehicle entry and exit to KV village in resentment against the state government's decision to release compensation to the structural damage at KV village of Tansuri Par subdivision. The Har Khar Diranga campaign, which is a part of the Azadi Kamrit Moth Sub celebrations, was officially launched today at the World War II Museum at Kisama in Kohima with Chief Minister Nipur Yu as the event's special guest. The event started with the hoisting of the national flag. Addressing at the program, Nipur Yu said, Flags are a symbol of pride and joy representing hard earned freedom, and that the Har Khar Diranga campaign was to invoke a feeling of patriotism in the hearts of the people besides promoting awareness about the Indian national flag. 
Rio urged citizens of the state to hoist the national flag from August 13 to the 15th and to take part in the nationwide campaign. Celebration is all over the country and likewise our state is also fully participating to achieve 75 years of freedom of independence Hargar Diranga as mentioned <coughs> therefore this campaign is going on and in these 75 weeks starting from 12 March 2021 the celebration and the participations of various organizations that carried out programs from school children conducting quiz, essays, drawings, and other activities. The participation of NCC, NSS, NYK, and Bharat Scouts and Guide. Nagaland Chief Secretary Dia Alam said that the celebrations of 75 years of independence was a momentous occasion and an important milestone for the country and its people. It is being informed that apart from private houses, the flag will be hoisted at PSUs, local self-government bodies, government educational institutions, commercial establishments and private firms. The nodal officer of the veterinary animal husbandry services of Tsiminyu district, Dr. Kwaton Lotsela, has confirmed that livestock of about 50 farmers from the district have been affected by African swine fever during the time of reporting. Dr. Tsela informed to be in touch with the department in concern for relief as reports are being collected. He added that the department was being vigilant against the outbreak and creating awareness among farmers to report any unusual mortality to the nearest veterinary institutes as well as to maintain strict containment measures. Dr. Tsela said that the cases were confirmed in Siminu village through laboratory tests and that the affected areas were being sanitized. He said villages that have reported mortality due to suspected ASF are Zipenyu, Nova Pen, Terong Vonyu, and Teso Penyu. Results for positive confirmation of the disease are being awaited in these villages. As part of Harikar Tiranga activities, a morning procession was organized by the district administrations of Bandari on August 12 at Bandari in Woka district. During a brief program that was conducted before the procession, Bandari's additional deputy commissioner Rohit Singh stated that the Harikar Tiranga encourages people to bring home the tricolor and hoist it to celebrate India's 75th Independence Day with pride. Civil administration officials and government servants, public leaders, GBs and students participated in the procession which started from the town hall junction and culminated at the sports ground. The civil administration also conducted community cleanliness work on the same day as part of the preparation for the upcoming 75th Independence Day celebrations. The District Planning and Development Board of Kipire met today in the Deputy Commissioner's Office in Kipire. During the meeting, High School Leaving Certificate and Higher Secondary School Leaving Certificate Examination Toppers of 2022 from Kipire District were recognized. The board discussed a number of agendas such as the construction of a log drum house, PHC at City Me Town upgrade of Class 11 Arts at Akape School in Kifire, COVID-19 scenario in Kifire District, National Helpline for Senior Citizens and Registration of Societies among other matters. Of the department, tribal representative, 
political leaders, and uh, I'm glad to know they are not here, student boys, and well wishers gathered here today. I, on behalf of Nagaland State Rural Development Commission, will be president. If you ever come to the Kohima district, please kindly visit our office as well. The structure, a little bit about the structure of the headline. Uh, so, uh, at the state, we have our pro uh, project manager, as well as under the project manager, we have uh, four leaders. One is the human response leader, team leader. Before it was difficult for the streets of the president. It was not one way. As part of the celebration of Azadi Karmat Mots of hundreds of school students today took pledge against substance abuse in Kangkokpi district during an event organized by the Zonal Education Office. The pledge to make the country drug free was administered to the students of different schools as part of the Nasha Mukt Parat Abiyan of the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. The pledge was administered to school students namely Hyangpong High School, Kitem Lambi Government High School, Chalwa High School, Kang Pichang UJP School, among others. Similarly, Zonal Education Officer and officials also took the pledge at the ZEO office. Today we are united to take united to take a bridge under the under the Just three days ahead of Independence Day, the Delhi police has recovered 2,000 life cartridges and arrested six people, including owner of a gun house. According to Delhi police, accused appear to be belonging to a criminal network and hence terror angle is not ruled out. Of the six arrested, additional commissioner of police Eastern Range, Vikramjit Singh, identified two as Rashid and Ajmal. He said an auto rickshaw driver had tipped the police about the duo. A total of 2,251 life cartridges has been recovered. We got a tip-off about the same on August 6 from an auto driver who had dropped two persons at Anand Vihar Railway Station, Singh said at a press conference. Of the six people arrested so far, one is a person from Dehradun. He is the owner of a gun house. Prima facie, it appears to be done through a criminal network. However, police are not ruling out a terror angle, he added. That's all we have for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.